the evolution of the jungle. Here's how it all got started, folks. 1971 Erin High Street, our first fruit stands on a vacant used car lot. We put together stands from old camper tops from the junkyard because the city of Hamilton wouldn't give us a permit for roofs. It was great when the weather was nice, but when it rained, we had to shut down and once it rained for three days straight. That's my mom. She was always there helping. What a worker. There's my dad. They drove down from Cleveland to help. There, that's on my 22nd birthday. I was making about $200 a week back then, working about 80 hours. My dad would just shake his head. Are you crazy, kid? You went to college for this? There I am. Look at that black hair. Man, those were crazy days back then. Nineteen seventy-two Marymount, Wooster Pike. We tried to get a little fancy back then. We put screens all the way around. We built a roof, and behind there we had a gas station. We lived in that gas station. We took one of the bathrooms and we turned it into a shower. The back of the gas station we divide into bedrooms, and we put a little kitchen back there. And that's where we lived. The bunk beds were so high, if you happen to sleepwalk, you're in big trouble. This is nineteen seventy-two Sims Road, across from Fisher Body. I should have been a real estate agent. Every time I get on these vacant pieces of property, people would see the cars coming in, and before you know it, someone would buy the lot from under me, and I was constantly moving from corner to corner, and I was getting pretty tired of it, and felt like giving up many times. There's Dennis Ante, the kid on the right. Believe it or not, he's still with me today. This was another stand on the west side where Bill Maps is right now. It was a temporary setup to see the snow fence. Man, was it hot. The heat just eat up that produce. It was pretty rough back then. There's Marsha, and she would always bring her dog. Nineteen seventy-three. This is across from Fisher Body. You probably remember this spot the most. We were really making progress then. We had a real roof. It was temporary. It still leaked, but at least we had the sun off the produce. Bill Warner, the superintendent of Fairfield, really helped me get that through. I get up in the morning, about 3 o'clock in the morning, I go by the produce, I come back to the stand, I do the chalkboards because that was our only form of advertising. We still use the chalkboards today. I told you everything had to be portable. You see that trailer? I had to gut it out and made it into a cooler. I wanted to paint it a flashy color, so one day I was spraying it lavender. All of a sudden, across from Fisher Body, guys were waving their hands in the windows. I thought they were saying, good luck, kid. One ran across the street, said, hey, the wind's blowing that way. You're getting lavender all over our windows. Boy, did I turn that machine off in a hurry. Hey, who's that good looking guy? Back then, we were open from May through October. We had a nice little business. Most of the people remember that stand. I see a lot of my same customers in the store today. That's my mom, she's always smiling. She helped a lot. She would come down from Cleveland, jump out of the car, and before you know it, she had an apron on, and she's helping. Nineteen seventy-five. Guess what, folks? We finally got our own piece of property. The roof didn't leak. But we had walls. We had windows. We even had air conditioning. I thought I died and went to heaven. This is Christmas. We're doing baskets. We did a nice little business out of that building. That's my wife, Joni. By popular demand, we started getting into more items besides produce, milk, bread, and other grocery items. We had two Dobermans back then. Jason and Shannon, they really looked mean, but they're really babies. Here's my family, my wife, my boy Jim, my little girl Dana, and the youngest Chris. He's there in the bubble. For you guys that don't have a little girl, you're missing something. They say behind every successful man is a good woman. Well, I had four of them. 
my mom, my wife, and I had Esther Benzing and Fanny Cunningham. Before I could even buy this piece of property, I had to get the zoning changed. I was nervous. Me and my wife went down to the Zoning Board of Appeals and told them we want to put a fruit market there. The lawyer stood up for the city and said, you can't do that. It's not zoned properly. I said, wait a minute. Next door, there's an Arthur Treacher's. That's commercial. The lawyer said, that's different because people working in the area can go there and eat lunch. Esther stood up and said, I don't see the difference between having an apple or an orange or going to Arthur Treacher's for lunch. She banged the gavel on the table and said, good luck, son. And I was off and running. Now I actually had to buy the property. So I met with the owners. One of them was Fanny Cunningham. I had $10,000, but I didn't have any credit. She said, can your parents co-sign? I says, no, I don't want my parents to co-sign. They work too hard for their money. I don't want to take the chance. And we just sat there and waited. And Fanny stood up and said, I'll co-sign for you. Good luck. I said, you won't regret it. I'll never be late on my payment, and I was off to the races. Well, this was a great little store. We still had mostly produce, had a little wine, a little deli, but it was really too small. On busy days, people were lined up at the registers like crazy. We only had nine at that time. Look at all these young kids. We're all about the same age. We worked as a team. We sold corn for 99 cents a dozen back there. Look at Dennis Annie again. When Brenna Cassano brought the, the carolers over one Christmas, there were so many of them, they stopped the whole store. In 1988 is when we really started taking a little bit of gamble with the craziness of jungle gyms and niche marketing. We added palm trees. We built the animal scene out in front. People said, you're crazy. Why do you want to put so much money in that? But I wanted to see what would happen if I could make a store that's entertaining and fun for shoppers, again, across the line. And it was real scary. We expanded again into the bakery, a bigger deli, a meat market, wine, seafood, all the things our customers were asking for. I want shopping at Jungle Gyms to be fun because I enjoy myself. I work 80 hours a week over there. There I am playing shopping cart bingo, where you pay three or four of a kind on your register tape and you win your groceries free. I love my customers. There, this lady here, see this lady right here? See that big smile on her face? She just won $350. See my face? I'm not smiling anymore. She's smiling. I put this story together to let you know that we're not a big corporation. We started on the bottom and worked our way up. And if you young people out there have an idea or a dream, don't be afraid to go for it. If you get knocked down, pick yourself up again and keep on going. If I can do it, you can too. And just believe in yourself and your dream will come true. Oh, and by the way, make sure you have fun along the way.